praise in our hearts. We thank you for the opportunity, the blessing of being around family and friends during our Thanksgiving holidays. We thank you for allowing us to get through this day. We ask a special blessing on this commission, the parish that we serve, and our leadership. Lord, we ask also that you continue to bless the health and recovery of Mr. Dougherty as we're excited that he's here tonight. In all these blessings, we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. In your board packets are the minutes of the November 2016 zoning meeting. I'll entertain any motion or comment. Commissioner Davis. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any further comments, please vote. Motion carries. Staff, are there any cases you wish postponed? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Number one on the agenda, 2016-399-ZC, request to postpone until February 2017. So you want to postpone it for two months? Yes. The next one, um, we have a request. Um, it, uh, it is actually on page four, number 11. Major amendment to the PUD, ZC 0801007, requested to postpone until January 2017. Okay. And the next one is PR 1610002. And now uh, we suggest to postpone until February 2017 as we're still working on getting a revised plan. And that is PR 16-10-002? Correct. And that is till February? February. Okay. I will read these and then we'll ask the commission for a postponement. Yes. All right. This is a public hearing. The public is encouraged to speak on behalf or in opposition of any case of interest. Zoning change request cases applicants for a proposed change of zoning district or amendments to the land use ordinance requiring review and recommendation of approval by the Zoning Commission before action by the Parish Council are as follows. And I will uh, specifically address the cases recommending for postponing. 2016-399-ZC, existing zoning, A3 Suburban District, I-1 Industrial District, and I-2 Industrial District. Proposed zoning, I-2 Industrial District. The parcel, 15 acres. The petitioner, Chris Fernandez. The owner, Charles Ruffino. Representative, Warren Compagna. Parcels located on the east side of uh, Kabirin Drive, east of Camp Villery Road, south of Fleetwood Drive, Ward 9, District 11. Postponed from the 11-2-2016 meeting. Is there anyone who would like to speak on behalf of the postponement? Uh, Warren Compagna, 920 Carroll Street. Uh, we would like to postpone till February so that we can do some uh, plot layouts, some artist rendering of what we're trying to do there, and get it all a package together so that we can present it to the uh, homeowners in that area and show them what we have and what we want to do and get their opinion and the changes to see what they want us to change, what they don't want us to change, so we can go forth and, and we should have all that. I know that holidays are coming up, so it's going to be hard with, to meet with the, the uh, homeowners. And uh, so right after the holidays, we'll have all this together so we can get that opinion. So when we come up in February, we can show you what we propose and hopefully we can get those, those people to agree upon it. Um, and that's the reason why we're looking for a postponement. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak uh, on behalf of the postponement? Is there anyone who'd like to speak in opposition to the postponement? My name's Tara Crow, 
and I live on Fleetwood Drive, which is right behind this property. Um, the, I've met with the residents, and the residents are against this. I have 60 signatures on a petition to present to y'all today, if y'all want to see it. Um, I'm representing them um, here at this meeting, and um, they do not want this postponed. We want this settled today. We want this. We hope that y'all are willing to go with us. And there was a motion last month to go against it. And so far, Mr. none of the parties that are filing for this have contacted any of the members of the community. They've tried to do this before in 2008, I think it was. And since we gave them our names and our numbers at that time, and he has still not contacted us about rezoning this property, about a proposal that he has to do, except to make it industrial, sell it for the highest dollar he can get, and get out of it. So we're against this postponement. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition of the postponement? Seeing none, Mr. Uh, Compagna. Do you care to make any rebuttal to the <coughs> opposition? Uh, yes, for the record, we didn't come here in 2008. The, uh, that, was, that was somebody else, Chris Fernandez, who I represent. This is his first time coming here. We didn't have enough information to get with the homeowners, to call the homeowners. Uh, we will be doing that right after the first of the year once we have something uh, so they can actually see it and, and, and agree or disagree. Uh, you know, we're looking at seeing with their opinions on on having larger buffer zones and uh, some sound barrier, some fencing, and different areas like that to get their opinion on it. Um, I know everything's around them is industrial, but we're trying to increase our business, which is going to increase tax revenue, employment. Um, we'll have all that laid out in February of you know how much money it's going to bring in, how many jobs it's going to bring in, and if and if you know, without trying to impact the neighbors. Um, and that's about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Would you care to make any rebuttal? As I mentioned before, I represent the whole neighborhood. We're against this. It's just cut and dry. We're against it. I can't imagine anything he could propose to us that's going to turn our way. It's increased noise, it's increased um, industry. We own, there's 50 homeowners, there's 50 houses in this property. There's uh, maybe 100 people total, including kids. You're affected, you're putting us in an area that's going to be totally eventually, the way y'all have it zoned right now, around us. If you get, give any more property to indi industry, nobody's ever going to come and buy us out. We're going to have to tolerate this for the rest of our lives. A lot of the people there have owned their properties for years. Thank you. This time I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Uh, Commissioner Dougherty. I understand what uh, the lady's saying, uh, but by the same token, it, it seems from what the gentleman's saying, you've got two different owners involved. And uh, uh, I think to do, uh, not to postpone this till February would be an injustice uh, to the new property owner uh, by not allowing him to contact the neighbors and uh, show them what he has planned. Now, that doesn't mean that he, he's going to get it, anything approved in February. So I would make a motion to postpone uh, case 2016-399-ZC uh, until February 2017. So moved. Second. Second by Commissioner Willie. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, I w I'd like to just add, add to that that uh, Mr. Champagne came up and and it seems like he wants to actually talk to to the subdivision owners and stuff like that. I'm sorry, sir, as you're not addressed. Uh, I believe he knows already from last month's meeting that we talked about a huge buffer space on the northern side of this property, away from the people that are living on the on the actual subdivision, 
that one street, I believe it's called uh, Fleetwood. That's where we have a major concern. So that's something that you will have to address with these individuals that, that live in that subdivision. Now, it doesn't mean you have to agree with them. It just means that I believe you, I believe you should, should at least hear what he has to say about it. Any other comments from the commission? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Dougherty to uh, postpone until February 2017. Second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. Motion to postpone carries. Case, zoning case number ZC08-01-007, major amendment to a planned unit development overlay, the parcel 92.61 acres. Petitioner, Gulf State Services, Mike Soche. Owner, Lucky 7 Trust. Versailles Business Park, LLC, Versailles Land and Development Company, LLC. The parcel's located in the north of I-12, west of Holiday Square Boulevard, south of Versailles Subdivision, Ward 3, District 5. Is Council District 5 or 9? Is District 5 and Council District 9? Is it 5? Okay, Council District 5. Staff recommends postponement. The petitioner requested postponement, and um, he is here to address the zoning commissioners. Very good. Mr. Soche? <coughs> Members of the commission, Mike Soche, 109 New Camellia Boulevard, Covington 70433, president of Gulf States Real Estate, and I'm representing Versailles Land and Development. Um, as you all know, we were here about, I guess, about a year and a half or two years ago on a major, major PUD amendment for Versailles. We've had a project uh, come to us, a very, very fine project that we've been working with the neighborhood on. We've had several meetings. The only reason we're asking just for a month of postponement is we're very far along. And uh, we actually have another meeting with some of the homeowners' uh, representatives tomorrow, I mean Thursday evening. So we do feel we can get things resolved. They're in a better position for presentation to you guys within a month as opposed to two months. So uh, we were asked by the homeowners' uh, board to um, delay this a month, and we uh, acquiesced, and that's why we're here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Soche. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to support the request for postponement? Is there anyone who wishes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, uh, come if you come to the podium. Um, I think some of the association. S thinks excuse me. First, would you state your name and address for the record? April Harris. And your address? 1400 Avenue Des Marquis, Covington, Louisiana. Thank you. And you are speaking on behalf of the postponement? Yes. Okay. Um, but I just want to understand, is it postponement for one month or two? Because the landowners, the homeowners were expecting a January date? For, correct. No, the petitioner, Mr. Soche, has asked for one month until January. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the postponement? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Motion to postpone. M motion by Commissioner Casabon to postpone. Second by Commissioner Richard. Commissioner Fritz-Morris, do you have any comment? No? We have a motion by Commissioner Casabon to postpone until January. Second by Commissioner Richard, please vote. Motion carries. PR 16-10-002, use retail building and restaurant. Corridor, planned corridor overlay. Uh, current zoning, HC2 Highway Commercial District. Parcel is 9,000 square feet. The petitioner, John S. Bowers III. The owner, JSB Highway 21 Lots, LLC. Representative GNS Engineering LLC. The parcel is located on the east side of Louisiana Highway 21, south of Azalea Drive, Ward 1, District 1. Um, postponed from the November 2nd, 2016 meeting. Staff? 
Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I spoke to the representative uh, through email later on today, and he uh, indicated that he was not going to be able to make it, however, requested to postpone because they're still working on plans. Uh, considering that the uh, holidays are approaching, we suggest to maybe postpone until February to give them additional time to complete all the work and, and come back in February with a revised plan. And the petitioner was uh, concurred with that request? Yes, correct. Yes. Very good. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the postponement? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? <coughs> Hearing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. A motion to postpone to February. Second. Motion by Commissioner Davis to postpone till February. Second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any further comments? Hearing none, please vote. Motion carries. Twenty sixteen dash four sixteen dash ZC existing zoning A two suburban district proposed zoning A four single family residential district in plan unit development. Um, well, we are going to read two cases together. We're going to combine them. However, we will vote on them separately. Um, again, that will be 2016-416-ZC existing zoning, A2 suburban district, proposed zoning, A4 single family residential district and plan unit development overlay. The parcel 17.81 acres, the petitioner Jeffrey D. Shane, the owner 1781 property LLC, Adam Henning. Parcel is located on the north side of Louisiana High 22, west of Oak Park Drive, east of Grand Oaks Drive, Ward 1, District 1. This was postponed from the November 2nd meeting. We will also hear 2016-417-ZC, existing zoning A2 suburban district, proposed zoning A4 single family residential district, the parcel 17.81 acres, petitioner Jeffrey D. Shane, the owner 1781 property LLC, Adam Henning. The parcel is located on the north side of Louisiana Highway 22 west of Oak Park Drive, east of Grand Oaks Drive, Ward 1, District 1. Again, postponed from the November 2nd, 2016 meeting. Staff. The petitioner is requesting a zoning change to plan unit development. The site is proposed to be developed as a 46 lot single family residential subdivision and the lots will have an average size of 60 by 130. Note that a zoning change request to A4 single family residential has also been submitted for the same site in order to establish the underlying zoning. The site is proposed to be accessed through a boulevard type driveway for, from Highway 22. All the required information has been submitted and the staff would like to recommend approval. However, I would like to um, bring this up to your attention with this note that Staff remains concerned with the high density of the proposed subdivision considering that the site is surrounded by single family residences on large parcels of land on the south, east and west sides. However, the concerns regarding the impact of the proposed subdivision on the general drainage of the area have been reduced considering that the following additional information has been provided. The creation of the three acre pond which you see on the plan will show the release of runoff of 75% of its pre-developed rate, slow the discharge time, and will benefit the surrounding watershed. So staff would like to recommend approval of both cases, 2016-416 and 2016-417. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, good evening. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, I represent uh, the owner and petitioner in this case, uh, which is 1781 Property LLC. Uh, I obviously will be making my remarks as it relates to both cases before you. Um, the uh, current track is, of course, Zone Day 2, as staff has uh, read to you, and we seek to change the underlying zoning to A4 and also ask your consideration for a recommendation of a PUD overlay. Uh, this case was on your docket uh, last month, and staff suggested that it be postponed, uh, and we concurred because, quite frankly, there were some details in last month's staff report that we thought 
um, warranted further investigation by the owner developer and I'm happy to say that as a result of that um, we developed uh, in my view a, a very detailed recreation plan that should be in your packet uh, and also presented um, some drainage information uh, to staff uh, which allowed staff to get comfortable with not only our active and passive amenity areas but also the benefits that the development of this track will bring to the region uh, as it relates to drainage. Uh, if we could, let's talk about some particulars. Uh, this parcel is on the north side of Highway 22, it's sort of northeast or uh, on the east side of, of Gust Island subdivision, if you're familiar with that. And uh, with all due respect to staff's comments about density, which I think are accurate, it is also interesting to note, and I think you should be aware, that the subdivision to our direct north, which abuts us, Ruel de Chen, uh, has similar development and density as we do. There are also other subdivisions in that corridor that have similar development and density as we do, including Gust Island, and particularly that portion of Gust Island on its easterly end, which would be south of 22, just across from this track. Um, I would also suggest to you that um, the tracks that uh, abut the subdivision, uh, the one to the south uh, was actually owned by the uh, family or the lady that sold us this parcel, and she likewise sold off the parcels that abut our subdivision on the south and east side, um, so that uh, the family and these folks have knowledge of um, our proposed development. And I think it's a classic example of what has traditionally been a, a rural um, slash suburban area that did have larger tracks, but as we know, we've got considerable development uh, through that corridor, and some of that development includes densities that are very similar to this. Uh, in particular, um, I would hope that you would agree by looking at the PUD plan, uh, we worked very hard to create for on such a small tract of land, a very large and significant green space area. And in fact, a pond that actually exceeds in size and capacity the needs of this subdivision. When we realized that there were some existing drainage problems already in the area and that we needed to make sure that our drainage facility not only took care of our development, but hopefully would assist with drainage again in the area and the problems that were there. Uh, a subdivision of this size, meaning 46 lots, uh, does not require a traffic impact analysis. Uh, if so, that would have been prepared, would be part of the submission and part of the staff commentary to you. So that's not something that's been omitted um, um, uh, by negligence, but it's something that is not required. Um, of course, at the zoning and PUD level, although drainage is not technically an issue, we understand that you and the public have good reason to have, um, I guess, questions or concerns about drainage. Uh, we've spent a, a good bit of time and money on the drainage issue at this point, although we have not prepared a formal hydrology study and submitted it to the parish for review. We will do that at the time of preliminary. We have certainly looked at the elevations, the LIDAR, the outfall, and we presented that information to staff so that we could come to you tonight and say with comfort we think this works. I also take um, some pride in the fact that our recreation development plan is going to provide some interesting opportunities for the people that live in this development. Granted, it's relatively small, but I think it's nice to know that there's going to be a large pond that's going to provide fishing opportunities with a fishing pier. There's also going to be uh, walking paths, uh, jungle set, picnic tables, things of that nature, which will allow and create a sense of community. Um, I know that uh, you've heard uh, me say this and others uh, to you before, uh, but the density of the subdivision is to some extent a necessity in order to provide the central sewage and water facilities uh, that not only the law requires, but what the environment deserves. And so uh, we don't think that uh, 46 units, uh, and as you may have seen in the density calculation, uh, the actual maximum amount of units uh, that this acreage uh, would allow would have been as many as 53 units. 
Uh, we, in fact, are coming in at 46 units. We do have some diversity as it relates to the widths of the lots, and we tried to develop some character. Again, it's a small subdivision, but tried to do some things with some of the lots, particularly those in the cul-de-sacs uh, where they abut uh, the pond area and things of that nature. It's a small piece of property, but it could be a very nice small community, a true sense of neighborhood, and that's what we've tried to create. So um, I think what I would like to do at this time, Mr. Chair, is reserve any remaining time in the event that there are others here tonight of interest so that I can perhaps address their comments and answer any comments of yours. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in opposition? Mr. Shane, reserve comment? No, sir. I would, if you have any questions, of course, I'll be glad to address them. But otherwise, I think I've completed my presentation and certainly hope that you will consider recommendation of both an A4 and PUD to the council. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Yes. At this time, we would close it to the public and bring it to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, uh, sir. I, I motion to make a motion to approve both 416 ZC. Or do you want us to do them individually? We will do them individually. Okay. And uh, 416 do, ZC. Okay. If we may, because uh, they're actually in reverse order. So okay. I would ask that to get a motion on 417. 417 ZC. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve. Commissioner Davis. A question for staff. I know you, you had two however comments. One was however you had a concern of the higher density and the next you had however you like the fact that the retention pond is going to re reduce the runoff by 75 percent. Does that cross out? Does that mean it crosses everything out? I'm just wondering because with the A3 zoning on this property that would reduce the number of lots from 46 to 39. Jeff can you come up and explain to me is there a reason why we can't leave it A3 and just have 39 units and make them 70 foot wide instead of 60? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the pure economics of extending central okay. sewer and water. Because it's such a small development, you yep. don't have enough lots to spread the cost of that infrastructure. So it's not so much trying to reap every last dollar, but to make sure that you can provide high quality and environmentally sensitive facilities. I do like I do like your your plan on the on the pond and the pier and stuff like that. Good. I'll Thank make a motion you. to second if nobody is going to make it a motion. So, <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions for staff. The, the one big question I had in reviewing this is what is the underlying zoning of that pud immediately north of it? I mean, Mr. Shane indicated it was similar, but that was my one question. It, uh, does, it doesn't have an underlying zoning considering that it was rezoned before we, um, before the comprehensive rezoning. Okay. So they just right. went, they just requested the zoning change to plan unit development. Got it. However, so we don't really know the density of it. It has a similar density. You think it's similar? Yeah. Okay. It, that was my only question. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Lauren. Yes. Jeff. <clears throat> and, and this applies to staff as well. If you get on Highway 22 in the in the evenings when people are headed towards this subdivision, <clears throat> it's common for the traffic to be backed up all the way to the causeway. And it's not that I realize this one is small. <clears throat> but we keep adding one more small, one more small, and one more small, and we're not doing anything to improve the ability to get home. And someday we're going to have to sit down as a parish and start planning. I mean serious planning because as long as that bridge is the way it is, We just, even though we're adding incrementally small units, we're building a catastrophe. It's, it's almost as bad as when I lived in Atlanta trying to negotiate 22 in the evenings. And, and I'm not trying to get you to defend 
your subdivision. I'm just saying this. Yeah. Well, I'd like to address it. Please. Well, I think those are obviously good comments and, and comments that all of us uh, understand because we're a part of the community. And my guess is, is that most of us drive on major corridors going to work or coming home and experience similar conditions. Uh, a couple of thoughts. Uh, one, Mr. Dean's aware of the project. Uh, and this project does contribute uh, transportation impact fees into the parish coffers. I'm not suggesting it solves the problem, but one of the contributions it does make uh, is economic in that regard. Uh, the other thing is that although, um, again, it's in Councilman Dean's district, uh, it also uh, passes um, through the Madisonville area, and as you know, the councilmen have been working as it relates to, um, and Mr. Hand can correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think they've been looking at um, other situations as it relates to traffic flow through the bridge in Madisonville and uh, traffic improvements and things of that nature. So I think the problem is not only under study, but there are real solutions that are being developed. Um, and so I think you're correct in that we need obviously corridor improvements to allow for free flow of traffic. Um, and I guess it's the age-old problem. Uh, how do you fix it? When do you fix it? Uh, when is too much too much? I would only say that I think the contribution of this 46-lot subdivision will be a minimal impact. And uh, hopefully subdivisions like this will continue to stir the discussion by parish government and state government as it relates to the improvements that are needed for the transportation in that corridor. Well, one final comment, and it's not a question, but I've, I've seen similar situations get to the point where the traffic or some problem get to be so big that they declare a moratorium on the area. And, and before we get to the moratorium stage, I would sure as heck like to hear what the plan is to, to do something. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Fitzmorris? Uh, it's a question for Jeff and staff, I guess. <clears throat> Jackson Court, the road, does it exceed our maximum 700 feet in this instance? I mean, it's, it's over 700 feet, and it terminates with a cul-de-sac, so I assume it would. And I know it's a, it's a question that later, if it gets approved, sure. but just curious if you gave any thought to that as we talked about in the past, some other thing. We've, we've had, oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes, and the configuration of the land, obviously, has limitations as to the road routing and the other possibilities. So we realize that's something that you, this commission is vigilant about and something that we will have to discuss with you at preliminary. Thank you. Commissioner Davis, same question. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Hand. Mr. Loren, I think this week in a newspaper there was an article about the bridge at Madisonville and how uh, there was a meeting out there that actually occurred with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development regarding the restrictive opening of that bridge during peak hours. So that it, there is a plan and it's being developed. This is one part, as I appreciated, of the plan to first test this segment of it to determine if they need to increase the hours, decrease the hours, or exactly how it would work, uh, in addition to a potential rerouting uh, involving Madisonville, where the traffic comes in and how it gets up. Thank you, Mr. Hand. If there's no further comments, we have a motion by Commissioner Randolph, second by Commissioner Davis, to approve. Please vote. Is this to approve the zoning first? This is to uh, Correct. approve 2016-417-ZC. Okay. And only that one. Motion carries. Uh, we will now address 2016-416-ZC. Any questions by the commission to anyone? Commissioner Fitzmorris? I move for approval. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmorris to approve, second by Commissioner Lauren. Any further comments, please vote. Motion carries. 
2016-418-ZC, existing zoning A1A suburban district and rural overlay, proposed zoning A4 single family residential district. The parcel, 87.06 acres, the petitioner, Jeffrey D. Shane. The owner, Lonesome Development LLC, Tim Henning. The parcel is located on the north side of Ronald Reagan Highway, west of Oak Alley Boulevard, east of East Stadium Drive, Ward 9, District 3. This was postponed from the 11-2-2016 meeting. We will also hear 2016-419-ZC, existing zoning A1A, suburban district, and rural overlay. Proposed zoning A4, single family residential, and plan unit development overlay. The parcel, 87.06 acres. The petitioner, Jeffrey D. Shane. The owner, Lonesome Development LLC, Tim Henning and the parcel is located on the north side of Ronald Reagan Highway, west of Oak Alley Boulevard, east of East Stadium Drive, Ward 3, District 3. This also was postponed by the November 2nd, 2016 meeting. Staff. The petitioner is requesting a zoning change to plan in a development overlay. The site is proposed to be developed as a 20, 210 lot single family residential subdivision with two commercial sites along Highway 190. Note that the zoning change request to A4 single family residential district has also been submitted for the same site to establish the underlying zoning. All the information uh, request, uh, required under the PUD have been submitted and staff would like to recommend approval for both the zoning change to A4 ZC 2016-418-ZC and recommend approval for the zoning change to plan unit development 2016-419-ZC. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fusel Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. I represent both the owner of the land and the petitioner, Lonesome Development LLC. And we uh, come to you this evening, again, the two cases uh, seeking A4 single family underlying zoning uh, and also seeking put overlay for the development of Oak Alley Meadows subdivision. Um, with the PUD plan in front of you, you can see uh, what the developer has, uh, his vision and uh, how we attempt to accomplish it. Again, this case was on your docket last month and staff had suggested postponement because we were still working on certain issues that need to be resolved. As a result of that, in my view, the staff reports to you this evening are uh, positive not only as it relates to recommendation but as it relates to each and every component uh, of the ordinance that needs to be met um, meaning in particular access and interconnectivity to both the west and east uh, also as it relates to green space both passive and active amenities uh, the forms of recreation um, with regard to the three ponds and other ball field areas that we're going to have um, the diversity as it relates to the size of the lots, their fronts and depths. Uh, and also we have a commercial component uh, with two commercial lots uh, in the front that are going to be a part of the PUD. Um, this case um, has some uh, extensive um, study that has already occurred before coming to you this evening. Uh, this project at one time was in the city of Covington. Um, annexation system uh, seeking to become a part of the city uh, decision was made by the city uh, not in a formal manner through a vote but that perhaps the development did not uh, perhaps meet their eye um, despite the fact that the project got approvals at every level uh, when it was obvious that um, the city might not be interested in having Oak Alley Meadows become a part of the city of Covington, we turned to the parish, uh, worked with Mr. Thompson, the councilman, and started developing these concepts. In particular, I give you that history because I think you would be interested to know that when we were pursuing annexation into the city of Covington, the um, annexation agreement that exists between the parish and city of Covington requires that a development going through the city of Covington process must also meet the traffic and drainage requirements of the parish, even though the property is going to become part of the city. In this instance, 
it is common knowledge by experts that the traffic and drainage standards of the parish are more onerous or let us say exceed the standards in the city of Covington code. So one of the things I would like to make mention of to you is that the parish has already provided written verification of approval and acceptance of both the traffic study and the drainage study at the time it was going through the city of Covington system. That doesn't mean that we don't have to submit hydrology for your review and staff review as it relates to preliminary subdivision approval. We certainly do. But I thought, again, it's not often when I bring a zoning case to you that these definitive studies have been done and reviewed by your parish uh, engineering department and in this case uh, have been approved. Uh, a couple of comments um, which hopefully you have picked up in looking uh, through the staff comments. Uh, again, the amount of acreage would actually provide for considerably uh, more lots, much greater density. Um, in fact, uh, 261 lots uh, would be the max under the A4, but we have reduced that by approximately 20% uh, because we believe that this is the right number of lots for this parcel. Contrasting this case to the prior case that I just presented to you, this is certainly not a 46 lot subdivision but it's also located on Ronald Reagan Highway and has connexity to the west uh, to um, 21st Avenue extension out by Covington High, has connexity to the east to Highway 25, U.S. Highway 190. You'll see that our plan also includes connections to Mary Grace, which is a street that runs through Oak Alley, and also a stub out to the northwest corner of the property which would provide access to uh, the development of other properties in the future to the north and west, say toward Covington High School. So um, we believe that this subdivision is well designed to meet the needs uh, of the people that will live in that area. For those of you that have traveled that area or perhaps visited Oak Alley, you hopefully would agree that it's a handsome and successful subdivision that has a lot of fine people in it. Um, people of all ages uh, and callings, if you will. Uh, you've got young families, older families, empty nest, and everything in between. And we believe that this will be a continuation and the creation uh, of a good neighborhood uh, mix uh, for all concerned. Um, I think I'd like to reserve the remainder of my time uh, to the extent that I may need to rebut or perhaps ask for questions uh, from you, but we certainly hope that you will consider making a recommendation to the council for the change of the underlying zone to A4 and also the PUD overlay as per our PUD plan. Thank you, Thank Mr. you Mr. Chairman. Shane. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Good evening, my name is Tim Burke. I live at 1124 Oak Alley Boulevard in the Oak Alley subdivision in Covington. When I filled out my speaker's card, I said that I was in favor of this development. And in fact, I am in favor of developing this parcel of land. That 87 acre parcel of land laying there does no one any good rolling up winter feed once a year. So I'm in favor of development. But I do have reservations. Reservations for the development are regarding infrastructure, and that takes two directions. Number one, infrastructure being the roads and the traffic that will result from this development. Right now I'm looking at, on Ronald Reagan Boulevard, the completion of the Ronald Reagan Crossing Apartments. That's 288 units, 288 families that will be added to Ronald Reagan Boulevard. Oak Alley Meadows, the proposed development will add 210 homes, 210 families to that. The existing Oak Alley is 200 plus families, of which my family is one. And currently there's phase four of the Oak Alley uh, subdivision that's going to put 50 plus more homes and families in that location right there. Right now we're looking at 750 families, potentially, that will be funneled during the prime drive time into a corridor less than half a mile wide on Ronald Reagan Boulevard. 
That is a bottleneck. That bottleneck will lead to another bottleneck, which will be Collins Avenue, which will lead to a choke point, which is the Bogafalaya Bridge, which will open up into another choke point, which is US 190 heading south toward the lake. Not only during the drive times, but those choke points are choked during many daylight hours on the days. If you've traveled that, you know what I'm talking about. So what we're looking at developing here is a choke point within a choke point going to that bridge, which is another choke point going to another choke point, which is US 190. Now, as I said, I think that 87 acres has to be developed. But the infrastructure in terms of traffic and the roads needs to be developed coinciding with that. We can't have the additional burden without having an infrastructure upgrade. Added to that, we're looking at a parcel of land between the Reagan Crossing Apartments and Oak Alley, which is up for sale, which will be developed on the Ronald Reagan Highway. Immediately behind the Ronald Reagan Apartments, we have on the drawing board the Fallbrook St. John Apartments, another 244 families. Adjacent to that and adjacent to Phase 4 Oak Alley, we have a five-acre site zoned industrial that's up for sale. Add that to what I have just described. And so in the coming three years, say, what is that going to look like? Heaven forbid contraflow is declared during some point in time. We will all be grounded and surrounded. And we better have a place to land helicopters in case of an emergency. Okay. The second avenue of my reservations is, and it's going to surprise no one, drainage. I lived in Metairie with my wife over 20 years, six feet below sea level, flood zone A, big flood zone premium. Three years ago, we moved here, okay, flood zone C. I am six times above sea level what I was in Metairie. And in the three years I was here, I have seen water in the streets here the same number of times I've seen water in the streets six feet below sea level in 20 years in Covington. That colors my perception of what's going on right now. Now, Mr. Shane has been very generous with his time and his information in explaining to us in the subdivision what is going on with Oak Alley Meadows and has, in fact, told us that they have improved the water removal from that 87-acre parcel beyond what it is right now. And that is good news. That is something that we like to hear. The problem is all that water goes to the same place that our water is going to right now. Mr. Shane and the developer, and I'm sure the builder, is doing everything they can to clean the water off of that 87 acres. But where it's going is beyond anyone's ability to uh, to help remove all the water that's going to be there. And although the water is going to move more efficiently off of that plat, it's going to be a greater quantity of water. We're talking about concrete and rooftops. We're building a giant watershed right there. And that water is going beyond everybody's ability to handle it. The problem with water in western St. Tammany is that natural features are used for drainage. By natural features, I mean the creeks, the streams, the branches, the rivers that carry the water away from where it is going to flood us. The trouble is those natural features change with time. They get smaller. Mother Nature is conspiring to flood us. Mother Nature is the enemy. Blue Swamp Creek, which carries the bulk of the drainage for Oak Alley, the existing Oak Alley subdivision, runs right behind my house. Every day, I get to see what happens to Blue Swamp Creek. And over the three years, I've lost a foot of bottom and perhaps two feet on the banks as silting, snags, and new vegetation grows in the creek and kills the ability for it to move water. Now, that happens in every stream, every creek, every branch. Unless you're going to commit to cleaning these things out periodically, you are reducing the ability to move water. So as I said, Mother Nature is the enemy. 
And remember everything I said with respect to the, the, trees, the streets and the traffic? That concrete, those rooftops are going to add water to an already existing load that is oversubscribed to what Mother Nature has given us. So I know that parcel has got to be developed. I want it to be developed, but I also want the infrastructure to go with it. Because if we don't see that, with respect to drainage, we're at risk, and with respect to traffic, we're going to be sitting there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? My name is Earl Moser, 1429 Dominic Drive, the intersection of Mary Grace and Dominic. My, my property also butts up to the development. My concern is traffic. Um, to reiterate what Mr. Burke said, you go out of that subdivision in the morning, I bring my daughter to school at St. Peter's. It is a nightmare getting out of there in the morning, going towards Covington High, going down towards Pool Lumber, any which way you go, it is a nightmare at any time of the day. More importantly, my biggest concern is drainage. The March 11th storm we had, 7.30 at night I'm in my house eating. Within 45 minutes that water was to my doorstep. The only thing that saved me from flooding was that field. My yard crest and it went straight to that field. Within one hour, 87 acres was not visible. It was full of water. So if you go to develop that with 210 houses, if you don't raise those houses, they're going to flood. If you do raise that land, I'm going to flood. So I don't think, you know, 210, I understand what Ms. Burke said, it's got to be developed. But it's got to be done correctly with us in consideration. I was born and raised in Metairie. I flooded for Katrina. I don't want to flood again. It sucks. But in March, I was that close to flooding. I mean, I was scrambling to pick my stuff up. Thank God for that field. That's the only thing that saved me. So that's my concerns, traffic, drainage. I'm a fireman in Metairie. I know what it is to drive through traffic. It sucks. Try pushing that many cars, responding to whatever, house on fire, baby not breathing. It's tough. It sucks. Put it in that intersection, it's not going to happen. Where do they go? And you're going to have that many cars, that many people trying to get to work trying to go to football practice, soccer, whatever. It's tough. I mean, and I, I go through it every day. So that's my concerns, drainage and traffic. And, and like Mr. Burke said, if you're going to do it, do it as the, the infrastructure improves. It's when 21 is, is opened by the hospital. I mean, right now, that's a nightmare. You can go through that and, and, and struggle. You go through the Bogofalaya Bridge. There's no telling. I mean, it's a flip of a coin if you're going to sit in traffic for an hour or if you're going to breeze right over it. So, I mean, I think if you're going to do 210 more houses on top of the apartments, on top of all the other stuff, do it as the, the infrastructure starts to improve and you can accommodate another 2,000 vehicles with all of those things being developed. So that, that's just my biggest concern are those two things. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else? You have about uh, a minute remaining. My name is Paulette Rooney. I live at 1480 Dominic in um, Oak Alley. I, I'm uh, um, agreeing with Mr. Burke. I've been flooded. Well, not not flooded. Water has come up on my property very highly three times. I've already I've gotten uh, flood insurance now, and we're in Zone C. So, as they're saying, something needs to be done with the infrastructure to protect us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Shane. Approximately how much time do I have? Six minutes. Six minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, I understand and respect the comments that were made by the residents this evening, uh, some of which I've heard before, uh, and uh, really comments that are pretty universal uh, for you as a commission with nearly every case you hear. There's often concerns about drainage, traffic, and the type and timing of infrastructure. Um, I would suggest to you that, again, 
Uh, let me elaborate a little more with regard to the traffic issue. Um, this project uh, meets and exceeds the city of Covington traffic standards. It meets the parish traffic standards. In fact, I have the May 16, 2016 written confirmation of your engineering department um, that confirms that, and I quote the TIA for Oak Alley Meadows subdivision on US 190 in Covington um, is a, has been officially accepted. Um, in addition to that, um, the connection to Ronald Reagan or US Highway 190 requires permits from LADOTD and my client has already procured the construction access permit from LADOTD, which means we had to submit a traffic study to them. My point is this, a traffic study has been done, somewhat unusual on the front end when you're looking at these cases as it relates to zoning. It has been reviewed, analyzed, and approved by the city of Covington, the parish of St. Tammany, and the state of Louisiana. Now, I don't think that's enough to stop the discussion as it relates to traffic because I understand the concern that more lots necessarily produce more traffic. I would also suggest to you that 210 lots and two commercial lots are going to produce a significant payment of impact fees to the parish. And as you know, the impact fee for the residential units is around $2,100, and roughly 50 or 55% of that goes to the transportation element. Does that mean that it solves the problems that are currently there are all problems in the future? No, but it will make, I think, uh, the start of something different. I am also personally aware of efforts being made by parish government and the city of Covington to uh, with the uh, state. In fact, I've been to one of the meetings in Hammond myself uh, as it relates to having traffic improvements in that corridor. One of the things that the traffic plan, circulation plan, accomplishes is that there's interconnectivity with Oak Alley and also interconnectivity to the northwest if and when there's development to the northwest. That is going to also provide some options, even for the people in Oak Alley that don't wish to exit their subdivision through Oak Alley Boulevard. If they're taking a child to Covington High School, they're going to have the ability to come to the west and come out of Oak Alley Meadows and hit Ronald Reagan Highway. Or likewise, they're going to have the ability to cross Oak Alley and get onto Regina Chelly Road and get onto Highway 25. So I'm not suggesting that development per se solves or does not contribute to the traffic issues that are there, but I would tell you that those issues have been studied, analyzed as per the applicable ordinances and laws and obviously, in my view, have been reviewed successfully. With regard to the drainage issue, again, not only does the drainage plan meet your standards, but let's talk a little more about this 87 acres. All flood zone C, all very significant elevation, just a very small smidgen of wetlands that's not even being developed. I think the total wetlands out of the 87 acres is less than three to five acres, something like that. Um, the point is this is a big um, high dry piece of property that's being developed. What is the result of development as it relates to drainage? As per your standard, the post-development rate of runoff must be reduced by 25% when compared to the current conditions. So anyone that is concerned about water that might accumulate on the 87 acres and what it may or may not do should also understand that there are three large ponds, the aggregate of which are about nine to 10 acres that hold, God knows, my engineer would know, but how many um, volume uh, of water of runoff so that yes, the 210 homes in the development of the subdivision do create more runoff, but the water is going to be collected, it's going to be managed, it creates amenities for the subdivision, but most importantly from a drainage perspective, it is going to be discharged at a rate that is 25% less. In addition to that, I know of personal knowledge that both the city and the parish are looking at the possibility 
of regional drainage improvements in that area that will assist all development. And one of the problems that often plagues us is that developments have different histories. Some were built and designed at a time when your laws and standards were different. You know, we have subdivisions and you see them all the time. They don't have detention. They don't have detention ponds. And it's not because the developer didn't care or the people don't care. It might not have been the legal requirement. So those same comments also apply to Blue Gum Swamp. Am I out of time? I'm sorry, I thought I heard a buzzer. Uh, to Blue Gum Swamp and Rattlesnake Branch, the outfalls, we understand that those outfalls deserve attention and we have to make sure that the water gets through those outfalls. And I think you know that as a planning commission, you're going to see those issues in greater detail and have commentary from your engineering staff when we come back to you for preliminary. So I respect the comments made by the residents this evening, uh, particularly with some of the experiences that all of us have seen in calendar 2016 as it relates to inundation and various tidal conditions and water and flooding. But I also believe and understand that um, a project such as this deserves special attention. It deserves to be looked at closely. I believe it already has been. I think it will meet the muster. But at the end of the day, the real solution is that if we're going to have continued development, we have to also make sure that we're developing solutions for infrastructure. And that's for both traffic and drainage. I believe that Oak Alley Meadows provides another opportunity for us to continue in working towards solutions in both of those regards. Uh, if any of you have questions, I will be glad to address them. Thank you, Mr. Shane. The opposition will also be given five minutes in rebuttal if you wish to make any further new comments. I take in good faith what Mr. Shane has just said. If all of the legal requirements and all of the engineering studies are saying that yes, this is a go ahead, there's not much to be said in terms of the law, the regulation, or anything else that's there to be approved or disapproved with respect to this development. The only thing we have is reality. Water came into the streets. When it comes into the retention and the detention ponds, that is what almost flooded Ms. Rooney's property, is our detention pond in uh, Oak Alley. It overflows. It overflows, it goes into the street. What is required is the means to drain the water from those retention ponds. I fully expect that the Oak Alley Meadow subdivision uh, will have excellent, I, I've seen the plans, I know all the detention capabilities and retention capabilities that they're building into it, but as I said before, the water goes to the same place. We can get it off of that piece of property, we can get it more or less through Oak Alley, it hasn't worked greatly up to now. But when it gets to Mile Branch, when it gets to the river, that's where the backup is. And that's where we have to build something into the system to keep the water moving. I spoke to one engineer who will go nameless who says that the only way that we can help Mile Branch move water is to pave it. And that ain't going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. We know that's not going to happen. But Maybe we can dredge, maybe we can clean, maybe we can do something else. We can't stop the development, I know that. But let's not drown us all in the, in the process. Thank you. Thank you. This time I'll close it to the public and I will bring it to the commission. Commissioner Casabon. Yes. Um, I hear your concerns. Uh, this particular area, I, I don't know if people are aware, of, well, I'm, I'm sure you are, that um, the Collins Boulevard, the, the road from there to Covington High, we have the right of way. I don't know who we, if the parish, the city, or the combination of it, but when we're looking at this many houses and uh, apartments that we need to find out from the state why we cannot go ahead and utilize the land that's they the right of way is there for uh, to do the the um, two lanes 
they did a small portion just from the bridge to the Lee Road red light, and that has significantly changed the flow of traffic coming off of 190. I mean, it's still there, but it is moving much better. So I don't know as, as a parish, a city, uh, I know the state's in the bind for money, but we're looking at, um, we do have solutions for that traffic. We, we could be able to, um, in the future, uh, you know, not before I'm sure these developments are in, but um, we do have the land, which is highly unusual. A lot of places that they don't have the land, they ha would have to buy the right-of-way. The right-of-ways are there on, on, on 190. And, um, and also, like I said, on Collins Boulevard. Uh, I think there's a lot of things on it now that people don't realize that that is the state's you know, right-of-way. Um, the, the water that, uh, another issue that I feel like we need to look at as a state or, or whatever is that, um, I know Mr. Thompson was telling me in that particular area off of um, airport, <coughs> went to, with a lady to um, sh show her a ditch. She, she needed her ditch cleaned and we took some, he takes um, our engineer or person from the parish with him all the time. And the guy said, we can't clean that ditch. We can't clean it out. He said, it's part of the scenic waterway. A ditch in front of her house is part of that waterway. So somewhere along the line, you know, I feel like we need to have things researched that we're not, we can't stop development. We can't, you know, for those reasons, I understand. But there are things that we can do, but we're not being allowed or permitted to do them. Um, and I, I don't feel like we can stop development. And being on this commission, I've seen for many years, it's sort of like you put it in and then they fix the highway. Then they will add that. And it, it's backwards. I understand that. But, um, I think that we you need to go forward in order to be able to fix some of these things that um, that that are to me fixable, and, and I, don't, I don't think people think about it or like they don't need to do it, but now we do. So um, I think this is an appropriate area for this subdivision. Um, that the drainage is, as we've been told and the traffic study has been done ahead of time, which is highly unusual, that I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Casabon to approve, second by Commissioner Willie. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of quick comments. Uh, we, we all feel, we, we're all residents. We feel that the traffic, we feel the drainage issues. We're very, very concerned about it. Uh, I just want to make a comment that the growth is coming, whether we like it or not. Uh, we're going to see about a 50% increase or more in our parish in, by 2030. And you say, oh, it's 2030, but it's, we're talking about 13 years. So it's coming. So it's, it's up to us to do the best we can to try to prepare for it. Notwithstanding for a moment the traffic and drainage, which we need to spend some more time on, on the actual development itself, there's some good things here. You know, a lot of times we don't have ingress and egress in multiple locations. We do here. I like the, the amenities. I like the size and the amount of the, 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 the ponds. And we'd we like to see a little slightly less density and maybe some more green space. Yep, but it meets the minimums. And I do understand the obligation that the developer has to, uh, to deal with the runoff and to retain uh, that water. Uh, that being said, once it does get released, we do have some choke points that have been mentioned, uh, and it's up to uh, our council to see what we can do to see if we can't clean those out and try to try to make some some positive impact. I do know that we're studying the entire watershed. Uh, this comes up every single meeting. Uh, we're hearing people out there in the audience. We're not um, believe me. We're not uh, we're not ignoring you. Uh, it's a complex issue, uh, but growth is going to continue to happen, and it's our job to try to try to do it in the, the best possible way uh, for for us as residents and for our kids. So uh, I just want to concur that I support the project. Uh, that being said, we do have some work to continue to do, and we will look at this again at the next stage, which 
uh, if we vote in positive tonight, that'll, that'll happen in the coming, uh, the coming months. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dougherty. Yes, in, in going along with Ms. Casbon's uh, comments on scenic streams, um, I think we probably have a number of scenic streams here in this parish uh, that back 20, 25, 30 years ago uh, were designated as scenic streams, scenic rivers, scenic whatever. And uh, I think this commission should probably pass a resolution requesting uh, the council to get with our uh, federal legislatures and see what we can do uh, to uh, undo some of these scenic streams. Uh, I know the Pearl River on the east side of the, the parish uh, is a problem mm -hmm. because it is a designated as a scenic river. And after Katrina, uh, the mouth of that river is basically blocked and you can't dredge it, you can't do anything mm -hmm. with it, but uh, the residents up and down the river uh, continually have problems when we have high river levels. So at, maybe at the end of the meeting, we should pass a resolution uh, or consider a resolution to the council uh, to see uh, if we can do something uh, as a body to try and get some of these uh, streams undesignated as, as scenic. Correct. I concur Thank you. with that. Are there any other comments? Now, we have a motion by Commissioner Casabon, second by Commissioner Willie, to approve 2016-418-ZC. Please vote. Motion carries. Now I'll entertain motions on 2016-419-ZC or any questions to the petitioner. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain motions. Commissioner Mo Casabon? Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Casabon to approve. Second by Commissioner Lauren? Yes, Lauren. Lauren. Any further comments? Not please vote. Motion carries. 2016-438-ZC, existing zoning A6 multiple, <clears throat> A6, multiple family district, proposed zoning A4A, single family residential district, the parcel 0.51 acres, the petitioner Wade A. Delat, the owner Wade and Tanya S. Delat, parcels located on the north side of North Shore Circle, east of U.S. Highway 11, Lots 14A and 14B, Eden Isle Subdivision, Phase 1A, Unit 1A, being 128 North Shore Circle Slide L, Ward 9, District 13. Staff? Uh, sorry about that, y'all. Um, the 2020 Five future land use plan calls for this area to be uh, designated as a residential area, including uh, single family detached dwellings, multifamily, and planned subdivisions for manufactured homes. Uh, staff recommends that the request for A4A 4 a single family residential be approved. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? If you come to this podium, state your name and address and reason for your request. Yes. Wade A. does let. 128 North Shore Circle, Slide L, Louisiana. And the reason for your request of change? Um, we just want to convert into a single family home. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve. Second by Commissioner Dougherty. Any further comments? Please vote. Motion carries. 
Thank you. Thank you. 2016-446-Z C existing zoning A2 Suburban District. Proposed zoning A2 Suburban District and manufactured housing overlay. The parcel 28,800 square feet. The petitioner, Stephanie Cyprian. The owner, Stephanie Cyprian. The parcel is located on the east side of Josephine Road, south of Mill Road, lot 11 being 72152 Josephine Road, Covington, Ward 3, District 2. Staff. The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses, including manufactured homes. Staff has no objection to the request. Staff recommends that the request for A2 Suburban District and manufactured housing overlay be approved. Is the petitioner here? If you please come to the podium, ma'am, and speak. Uh, tell us your name and address and the reason for your request. My name is Stephanie Cipran. I live at 210037 uh, Ohio Road, Abita Spring. Uh, I'm requesting, I used to live at 72152 Josephine. My house burnt in uh, July of 2015. And I'd just like to get back there, and I don't have enough money to build a house, and I'm getting older, and so I'd like to put a margin home there, not a margin home, but to trail it if I can. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public, and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Willie. Yes, sir. Our, our request is appropriate. I move our approval. Second. Motion by Commissioner Willie to approve. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Lauren. Yes, Ms. Cyprian. <clears throat> Could I ask a question, please? If you come to the podium, ma'am. <clears throat> In our packet, they have a, a photograph. It's kind of like a what do you call it, global earth, and it shows a house on the lot. Is that the house that burned down? Yes, the, uh, the area is cleaned off, and it, it's, it's vacant, it's cleaned off. Yes. Okay, I was, I was just wondering. Yes, I was cleaned off. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Willie? Okay, we're good. Any further comments? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Willie to approve, second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. Motion carries. 2016-452-ZC, existing zoning, NC1 Professional Office District. Proposed zoning, A6 Multifamily Residential District, the parcel. 0.6523 acres. The petitioner, Marilyn Wenzel. The owner, Marilyn Wenzel. The parcel is located on the south side of Crawford Road, east of Ramon, Ramos Street, Ward 3, District 2. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed as residential, including multifamily. Although there is no multifamily zoning in close proximity, the site is directly abutting multifamily residential units and a nursing home on the east side of the site. Staff has no objection to the request. Staff recommends that the request for A6 multifamily residential be approved. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? If you please come to the podium, state your name and address, and the reason for the request. Marilyn Wenzel. 100 Christwood Boulevard, apartment 418, Covington 70433. Uh, as you know, that the, the nursing home, the Trace Nursing Home, is two lots from my lot. And it's zoned medical district. It's about a three-story building that looks like a Hilton Hotel. And they've just built another uh, building beside it for cognitive care. There's a lot in between, and it's multifamily. Right now, my lot is professional office district, but it is not conducive for professional offices because there's hardly any traffic except the people going to their nursing home. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the reason that I'm petitioning to have, the, uh, have it multifamily. It's ideal for that. 
It's close to downtown Covington with all the exciting things that happened there. It's close to Rouse's food store, hospitals, and schools. Thank you for considering it. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Lauren to approve. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any further comments? Please vote. <clears throat> motion carries. Thank you. 2016-458-ZC, existing zoning, uh, HC1 Highway Commercial District, proposed zoning, HC2 Highway Commercial District, the parcel 2.81 acres, the petitioner Jones Fusel, Jeff Shane, the owner Nick and Marilyn Malazzo, the parcel is located on the south side of Gauze Boulevard West, east of Camp Salmon Road, west of Banner Road, Ward 9, District 14, staff the 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with commercial uses. Although the site is abutting HC1 on the east and west sides of the site, staff does not have any objection to the request considering that there are multiple more intensive retail, office, and service commercial uses in the area. And would like to note that the property was on C2 Highway Commercial before the comprehensive rezoning. Staff would like to recommend approval for the request. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fusel Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, I represent the owner and petitioner, Dr. and Mrs. Malazzo. Uh, interestingly, um, this property was zoned C2 in 1984, but not as a result of the comprehensive rezoning process. It was a result of a petition brought by the current owners, Dr. and Mrs. Malazzo. Uh, that sought and procured the C2 zoning. They actually had a larger track, a portion of which they sold off uh, to the west, uh, which is now the location of the advanced auto part that abuts this property on the west side. Um, and uh, for reasons that um, uh, really uh, have no good explanation, we did not monitor or pursue this property when it went through the comprehensive rezoning process in 09. If so, we should have actually uh, stood up and said, wait a minute, we've been zoned C2 since 2025 years. Would you please consider protecting our zoning? Be that as it may, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the area, there are a variety of uses, as staff has pointed out, uh, on both the west and east uh, sides of this facility that are fairly intense commercial uses. Uh, there are also some fairly intense commercial uses on the north side particularly the property that is annexed into the city of Slidell, namely the theater. Um, and uh, uh, there's also now a um, multifamily development uh, that the archdiocese is soon to open, uh, a project of mine that was annexed into the city of Slidell. So hopefully for all of the right reasons, we would ask that you consider making a recommendation to the council to restore uh, the highway to uh, commercial zoning that we think this property deserves. Um, the reason for the request is that we believe in marketing the property properly, uh, the use, the likely uses are going to be HC2. And uh, that's the advices that we've received and that's the reason that we come to you on the front end in hopes that we can again restore the zoning. Uh, if any of you have any questions or comments, I'll be glad to address them at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, sir. A motion to approve to, to make the change. We have a motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve, second by Commissioner Davis. Or no, Commissioner Fitzmorris, excuse me. Second by mm -hmm. Com Commissioner Fitzmorris. Seeing no further comment, please vote. Motion carries. 
2016-459-ZC, existing zoning, A3 Suburban District, proposed zoning, HC2 Highway Commercial District, a parcel 1.033 acres. Uh, the petitioner, Truett B. Carter, Jr., the owner, Truett B. Carter, Jr., the parcel is located on the north side of Brownswich Road, east of Pearl Street, west of St. Louis Street, lots 1 to 6, square 6, ozone pine subdivision being 1100 Brownswich Road, Slide L, Ward 8, District 9. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with commercial uses, the zoning change is being requested in order to bring the existing building in compliance with the appropriate zoning. Staff does not, does not have any objection to the request and would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Yes. Please come to the podium, state your name and address. <coughs> Truett Carter, 702 Chickadee Court, Slidell, Louisiana, 70461. And your reason for the request, sir? Forgive me, my hearing. The record. reason for the request? Uh, still didn't, sorry. Uh, why are you asking for the request? To make sure it's properly zoned for what we're using it for. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? My name is Edward Hanneman. I live at 4117 Pearl Street. I live adjoining to the property. Uh, they have been good neighbors for the nine years. They haven't been perfect, but they've been good neighbors and like to see them continue their enterprise there like that. I know the family, they're good people and let keep on rolling down the road. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission, Commissioner Davis. I'll make a motion to approve. It may not be perfect, but I believe it's correct. <laughs> Second. <laughs> motion by Commissioner Davis to approve. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Richard. I, I just have one question for the petitioner. Uh, yes. How long has that building been there? 1980. Thank you very much. Question answered. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Richard. Commissioner Richard. <clears throat> we have a motion by Commissioner Davis. Second by Commissioner Randolph to approve, please vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Richardson. Mr. Mr. Carter, is this the family that used to have the Carter's record service? Oh, forgive me, my hearing is not it, correct. It's the same uh, unit here, the Carter's record service. Thank That's you. my brother. <laughs> please vote. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, where are we here? Postpone, postpone. CP 07-06-096PR. Use commercial building, variance request, side yard green space. The zoning, HC2 Highway Commercial District. The parcel, 53,628 square feet. The petitioner, Duplantis Design Group, Thomas Buckel. Buckle. Buckle, excuse me. Thomas Buckle. Should know by now. <laughs> Owner, Three Z's Real Estate Company, LLC. Parcels located on the west side of Louisiana Highway 21, North Oshner Boulevard, Ward 1, District 1. Staff. The site was originally approved and is currently developed with retail, restaurants, and office uses. The variance request consists of a waiver of some of the required interior landscape buffers, as shown on the attached drawing, in order to allow for the resubdivision of lot D1A into lots D1A-1, D1A-2, and D1A-3. Staff does not have any objections to the request, considering that the site is already developed and meets all other landscaping requirements. Staff recommends that the requested variance be approved subject to all regulations and conditions. Thank you. Mr. Buckle. Yes, Tommy Buckle, uh, Duplantis Design Group, 34 Louis Prima Drive. Um, Mr. Zapardo couldn't be here today, uh, so he asked that I attend on his behalf. Um, there is a, uh, a pending sale, uh, potentially, of the Winn-Dixie, uh, a development interest that wants to come in and purchase that building in parcel. 
um, which IE facilitates the request to subdivide out that parcel from the balance of the shopping center. In doing so, as staff has indicated, there are a couple of uh, landscape setback uh, items um, that, that are triggered by that by creating that imaginary property line down the middle of the existing parking lot. So um, as staff has indicated, we're, we're here to seek, a, um, I guess, a variance regarding the setback, landscape setback requirements based on that new property line being created, so. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. You know you're gonna get, you know you're gonna get me. <laughs> I, just wanna, I just wanna make sure that I understand we're not doing anything in terms of the the plan corridor overlay. That's correct. It just has to do with the interior landscaping. That is correct. Okay. This will be this will be um, um, for lack of a better term, imaginary property lines drawn on the rear of what is the Five Guys building in the Panera Bread, yeah. and then along the side of the Winn Dixie and through that parking lot. Um, Except for you guys and us, nobody else will know the difference. <laughs> so. Commissioner Lauren is the guardian of the Highway 21 I understand. corridor. I understand. I, I feel like every time I come in here, we, I, I, owe, can, I owe him. He is, he is its guardian <laughs> angel, I can assure you, for the right reasons. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With Mr. Lauren's permission, I move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Commissioner Richard. Second by Commissioner Willie. Any further comments? Please vote. <coughs> Motion carries. CP 07-06-096PR, use commercial building variance request lighting requirements, zoning, HC2 Highway Commercial District, parcel 5,477 square feet. Petitioner to Plantis Design Group, Thomas Buckle, owner Zapardo Real Estate. Parcels located on the west side of Louisiana Highway 21, north of Oshner Boulevard, Ward 1, District 1. Staff. Uh, the site in question is proposed to be developed with a dental clinic and a coffee shop. The variance request consists of a waiver of a two-foot shield in the site light poles over the 300 luminums and, and the increase of the maximum height of the light poles from 30 foot to 35 foot. The objectives of the request is to allow for consistent type of lighting to be provided throughout the development. Note that the portion of the site currently developed was approved for a 35 foot height light pole and without the required two inch shields. Although staff re recognizes that the requested variances may result in light spill over the property lines, it will only affect the sites located with the Highway 21 marketplace development. Staff recommends that the requested variances be approved subject to regulations and conditions. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Bucco. Yes, Tommy Buckle, Duplantis Design Group, 34 Louis Prima Drive. Um, if you recall, two months ago, we were uh, in front of you guys asking for a variance on the same parcel, um, and unfortunately, it was an oversight uh, on our behalf. We had uh, realized that uh, after going forward that there, the, the site lighting poles that we had in, the, in our plans did not match the rest of the shopping center as it related to the height. It was the same fixture, but we didn't have the height. Um, therefore, the reason we wish we would have done it all at one time, but unfortunately, we're back here uh, making sure that we can match the same site lighting poles type and fixture as the balance of the shopping center, so it all looks uniform. And this is in, this is this is specifically for the the dental clinic and coffee shop parcel, which is parcel 2D. That's parcel 2D on your map. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? 
Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, I believe the consistency of the design is appropriate. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner Lauren, Commissioner Dougherty. Yes, uh, on the, in our packet, uh, there was a letter uh, from Mr. Zapardo indicating that the uh, adjoining property owner had no problem with it. Uh, I, I think, in the, with your hand, you give me guidance on this. I think it'd be more appropriate if we had a letter from the property owner and not Mr. Zapardo uh, in our files stating that he has no objection uh, to this. That's fine. Just send a letter in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he, Mr. Zapardo is the managing member of the other yes. parcels as well. Yes, I'm aware of that. I, I got it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any further comments, questions? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Davis to approve, second by Commissioner Lauren. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any old business to come before the commission? Is there any new business to come before the commission? Hearing none. Uh, yes. Commissioner Dougherty. Yeah, uh, it's my understanding that what we need to do is, is uh, I need to make a motion to open the agenda, and we have to have a 100% uh, vote in favor in order to open the agenda. So I would make a motion to open the agenda to hear uh, the Planned River or, or Scenic Stream uh, discussion for possible resolution. We have a motion by Commissioner Dougherty to open the agenda. Second. second by Commissioner Davis. Any further comment? Please vote. Motion to open the agenda is unanimous. Thank you. Commissioner Dougherty. I'd like to put a motion on the floor to request uh, the council to look into uh, having uh, a temporary or permanent change on some of the scenic rivers or scenic streams that we have designated in this parish so that we can do some maintenance dredging or what's necessary to help drainage situations in this parish. Go ahead, turn your mic on. <clears throat> there are some subdivisions within the parish that have drainage ditches that go through them that fall under the same category. They can't be cleaned because they're, they're designated as wetlands. I'd like to include that as well because it's the same problem. It's an extreme revised. I have no problem amending that. You know, what, what I'm saying is to rivers, maintain. streams, and all drainage. That Maybe all drainage tributary? Yeah. That take care of it. Commissioner Fitzmorris, to review drainage drainage tributaries? tributaries. All right, let me see if I got this. For the purpose of, of maintenance drainage, to maintain drainage, for the purpose to maintain drainage. Okay, see if we got this. So uh, Commissioner Dougherty would like to make a motion for a resolution to request the St. Tammany Parish Council to review drainage, drainage tributaries for the purpose of maintaining drainage. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. No, so moved. And, so, and I, would, I would also additionally add to, to include wetlands and designated scenic areas so you want to make an amendment or yeah because I think that's the whole reason right because we're having problems with being able to clean yeah, up the scenic so. rivers in the in the wetlands 
we have to do something, obviously, because let all me, the storms that we get, we're getting confer diverted. with council and potentially Commissioner Fitzmorris. Drainage tributaries would that include wetlands? Is that broad enough or no? It would be drainage tributaries is the term that so any drainage tributary would include a wetland. Yeah, so it's all yeah, all encompassing. Okay, so let me try to repeat this. So, well. That's just it. That, that there are federal state and federal. state laws, but so we have a motion for a resolution to request St. Tammany Parish Council to review all drainage tributaries for the purpose of maintaining drainage. So moved. Who second? Commissioner Lauren. Commissioner Lauren second. All in favor. Uh, any further comment? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, Commissioner the, Richard. the only issue there, and, and, and this would be great if it'll spur action, but I believe what we're talking about is, is really a state issue. Um, so we're going to have to get our legislative delegation involved, but the, the concept behind it, uh, being able to go out and clear these areas uh, to protect property and lives is, is what we're trying to accomplish here. So uh, notwithstanding the feds with respect to the Army Corps of Engineers, I'm just talking about what the state prohibits us from doing so at any rate we're requesting our our council get involved and move this ball forward and, and and how those words come through in a resolution is i think what we're debating here but i think we're all in agreement thank you thank you commissioner richard any other comments i just one other comment maybe we have an amendment can you read the last part again because I, I think we want to maintain positive drainage okay we can we can add positive Motion for a resolution to, requi to request St. Timothy Parish Council to review drainage tributaries for the purpose of positive drainage. Okay, for the purpose of positive drainage. We have a motion by Commissioner Dougherty, second by Commissioner Lauren. Comment by Commissioner Richard. Please vote. Motion carries. Any other business to come before the commission? Motion to adjourn.